Hi, welcome to Sewing Bee Unraveled with me, Jane from Haberdasher Do. Uh, we're looking at episode five, I believe. Time is flying. Um, it was children's week this week. They had to make a sailor suit. Um, the transformation was to create a wearable outfit from a uh, school uniform. And then the made to measure was Halloween costumes. Uh, always struggle with patterns for children's week because there's not a as big a collection as there is for ladies wear. so um the sailor suit a bit of an old-fashioned concept um couldn't find a pattern for a, a particular sailor suit but we've got some alternatives um so the sailor suit had to have a, a contrast tie and it had to have a contrast trim on the sleeves and around the collar and the collar the the square neck. Um, it also had snap fastenings um, on the front, uh, elasticated waist in the shorts, and uh, what else? I oh yeah, they had to do um, on the trim. They had to make it nice right angle corners. Okay, so I thought it was a bit of an odd challenge because I don't know anybody who put their kids in sailor suits these days. Um, but there we go. And they also picked up on little details like the trim. They marked people down for the trim not showing on both the collar and the sleeves. But if you looked at the overall um, finished garment, which may, may well have been you know very well sewn, and they had different colour collars, so they did sleeves. So obviously things aren't going to show up so much. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> so I thought the judging was a bit odd this week. Um, so yeah contrast trim so i think i could see a lot of them using just a, a normal satin ribbon um quite a thin ribbon so it's quite tricky to sew and to keep it flat and um, they could have used a braid or um, a rick rack you know the wiggly stuff this comes in different thicknesses so this is sort of a medium weight thickness and the um the snaps that they use this is just uh, one brand that we stock, uh, Prim, we do another one. Um, they're also known as CAM, K-A-M snaps. Um, the Prim ones uh, we get in because they have, you have lots of different colour snaps that you can get um, to use with the tool. So yeah, the thing is the tool is quite expensive, but once you've got it, uh, then you can use it for all sorts of things. And they can be snap happy. Um, they're pretty easy to use. They made a bit of a song and dance about using it, but um, yeah, it's pretty easy to use. And we can help you with that if you wanted to have a go. Right, I thought the history of um, the sailor suit was quite interesting. Um, I do like the lady who does the sort of fashion history and the textile history because uh, I learned a little bit there. And uh, my dad was in the Merchant Navy when he was a young boy. And I've still got his little sewing kit that he used. Yeah. Uh, and I also have his uniform, actually. I made his uniform. It was all white, his summer, his summer uniform. And it was in the 80s. And... Uh, they had like the, the, I think they called them pegs, with the pleats at the front. I made some shorts out of his, his short uniform. And I used to wear these trousers with a big rope <laughs> tied around. It was the 80s and I was very thin. There we go. Uh, right, pattern wise, this is what I've managed to find. So we've got McCall's um, 6913. It was a little girl's dress and it's got the sailor, um, the sailor neck detail with the tie. And on the reverse, um, you can see there's different uh, finishings to the collar. You can either do the traditional square collar. They've got it going into a point. They've got it slightly rounded. So different options there. Uh, so that's um, a little girl version. Um, I couldn't find a boy's uh, sailor top, um, but I did find this. Well, we've, we've made this pattern up, 6016. It's a lovely little pair of shorts with turn-ups or you can also make them into longer length trousers but it's a good pattern because you get this lovely little shirt as well and we've made both um i've only got the shorts left to show you um these are the little shorts they're very cute they've been in the windows they're a little bit faded i'm afraid um we made these out of a stretch denim and um that gave us a nice crisp um turn up at the bottom and then the, sh the shirt was made out of um, a cotton poplin. Um, some of the sewers didn't choose the right fabrics. Um, Annie, I think, chose, it was that lovely colour, sort of cornflower blue. 
uh, but I think it was like a polyester so it didn't crease and turn up and it was very floppy uh, and she also didn't get the elastic of my size and I think Deborah uh, was it Deborah yeah she chose a really heavy like a really heavy twill or heavy denim which was really thick so that didn't turn up very well or make nice crisp um points on the on the tie turnings and things okay so um fabric wise god lost my words then um any of the cotton popmans would be ideal um for making um little suits like this nice crisp uh, turn ups um really easy to to sew and uh, not going to be bulky and it's 100 percent cotton so it's going to be nice and cool in the summer we've got this lovely one it's one of my favorites at the moment uh all the sea creatures and and whales all our popkins are nine pounds a meter they're 115 wide um right those shorts are made out of a stretch denim and when i say stretch there was only a a little bit of stretch in it so you don't need a special needle or machine you can just sew it on a normal machine maybe a stretch needle with that but <clears throat> uh, and that does actually give you a nice crease um we made the shirt that went with those shorts out of our dinosaur poplin um i've sold the shirt now so i've got to show you on the phone it was very cute it was in the window last summer um got a whole range of spots uh, so you could combine spots with pattern fabrics or plain fabrics um, that's just one particular example um, this is a cotton linen mix with the swordfish on it it's an ex uh, ralph loren fabric i think i've showed that one to you before because i remember not being able to say ralph loren um, this is um, a newish one in that's a lovely cotton poplin that's 150 centimeters wide so it's a bit wider than the others um, and it is consequently, I think it's ten pounds a meter. No, twelve pounds a meter. Um, it's a lovely uh, deep navy with these little crocodiles on it, and I thought that would pair well with the. Probably doesn't show very well on the um, camera. That's a lovely um, sort of minty green polka dot. Uh, little girl wise, <coughs> we've got lots of florals and things uh, that would work well paired with um maybe a plain fabric a plain pink or plain blue for the collar or even a spot <laughs> um little hearts would look cute lots of lots of ditzy florals we've got um another thing we've just had come in and i really want to show you because i love it and i'm going to make something out of it um this is 100 percent embroidery on gaze this one is uh, a bit of a tie-dye version but it's a gorgeous cornflower blue really fresh summery blue that's 100 percent cotton and that is uh 12 pounds meter that's 140 centimeters wide and then we've got this which is a white 100 percent cotton and it's got a it's got a scalloped edge uh on on both both edges both salvages is a scalloped edge um, that's 100% cotton that's a little flower on that and that is 40 <clears throat> excuse me 14 pounds a meter they're both 100% cotton so they'd work really well um, for doing any of those little trousers dresses shirts anyway there we go transformation challenge oh i was going to say who did well um man Yi did well on that one and uh, christian and marnie um jill had a bit of a shocker as did um annie so annie's was out of the wrong fabric completely and she got the elastic wrong yeah it just didn't work at all uh, jill got marked down because she she found it really difficult with only one arm to get the the nice uh, corners on the on the trim um yeah but um manny chris and marnie all did well on that one uh right the next challenge was the transformation challenge and they had to make something wearable out of 
<laughs> school uniform. I don't think any kid was going to wear what they made. Um, uh, a bit of a mix there. Some still look like school uniform. Uh, some were quite funky dungarees and things. Um, yeah, Jill had a bit of a shocker again, I think. Yeah, she made a grey thing out of a grey uniform. Um, uh, who did well? I've got my notes here. I give everybody, I score everybody. So, um, oh, Angela did really well. Oh, she did that kind of jumpsuit with the gingham uh, accents, which looked pretty good. Uh, and Christian did well. And Manny again. Uh, so Manny was having a good week. Um, the final challenge was the Halloween challenge. And they had to make a, a 3D um, Halloween costume for a child. Um, so it, it seemed that quite a few people hadn't practiced this so they didn't quite know how it was going to turn out um so consequently things didn't all go to plan completely um so there were some notable ones deborah's mrs habisham was i mean it looked stunning it was the headdress that did it with the it was the, the fingers coming up on the headdress with the painted nails so just the, the detail that she went to uh, was amazing um so she used um like a basic uh, dress pattern for that um which i think you could use any of our, our something like this um basic mccall's uh, costume dress patterns there are loads of costumes in the mccall's um catalog i think because it's an american company they're really into their um comic con kind of thing and they dress up a lot for that so there's lots of adult and um quite a few children's uh, fancy dress costumes so that one was 6420 that's a kind of a princessy type dress um jill's dalek was amazing <clears throat> quite a simple shape um but to get it quite rigid i don't know what she did to get it quite rigid i guess maybe it was the weight of the fabric um but not an awful lot of sewing in it but the overall effect was really good um christian's clown was very clever um i thought we did have a clown pattern but i couldn't find it so um yeah and the fabric he used was perfect and the kid when the kid walked on wearing it i thought he did a really good job so that was quite funny um i thought broken's bat was quite clever they 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 didn't particularly like it and i think both the spiders were great i think they were a bit mean on jill's spider um you know i thought it was 3d she, when the kid hold, held um their arms up as you could see it was a spider with the web and everything but hey i um, couldn't find any spider co costumes um marnie yeah marnie and brogan i think used the same pattern um which was uh this one you couldn't really see it so much on marnie's 4887 but on brogan's you could see um she had the shape of the dress i thought they were a bit mean on brogan um get me defending brogan um you know, it was a really lovely little dress underneath with lots of detail on it. I mean, if you're a little girl going dressed as a bat, you don't actually want to look exactly like a bat, do you? So, you know, little feminine touches and then the wings made out of the umbrella. Anyway, that's 4887. Um, Marnie's was a bit of a shocker because her tubing didn't work to give it the 3D effect. But otherwise, the sewing on it was great. But i think she just she had a bit of a looked like she had a bit of a meltdown um or a very quiet meltdown and um yeah she didn't pull it together on the end but she'd done well in the other two challenges and that's my beef um but spiders <laughs> um couldn't find any spider costumes but i thought both of them you could use like a onesie pattern as a base and then um build spider patterns on those um Annie's dragon was really clever. It was just the, the lycra bodysuit and then the, the dragon head, which had a lot of detail in it. I couldn't find a dragon head. Um, that's a similar kind of thing. It's just like a hoodie you kind of put on. It's a bit more dinosaur -y than dragon, but I'm sure you could use your imagination. Um, who else was there? Uh, ch -ch 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 dragon yeah i think that's everybody and um, there were some other fancy dress ideas as well I'll get people coming in the shop this last week asking for pirates pirate ideas i know i've seen it on facebook on sobo um 
pirates are pretty easy an old pair of trousers cut off scarf tied around the waist patch on the eye uh bandana job done uh we've got lots of trimmings and things we've got the, the gold coin on a chain you could uh, add to it a bit of detail um there's a few other little ideas witches and red riding hood uh, princesses snow white um any of these sort of dresses and costumes you can use as a base and then and obviously in different fabrics they look completely different uh that one's a bit more witchy and vampire-y if we're thinking halloween right uh so as i said i give everybody points according to the judges and then um add them up at the end and the person who went home i don't think should have gone home but um there were two people who had uh who were below her so it was a real shame to see marnie go home but it is what it is and um there are still some very good sewers left in the competition in fact they're all they're all really good i don't think there's it's difficult to to pull out the weak ones at the moment um jill did have a bit of a shocker on the first two um and annie did as well uh but let's see what happens next week it's music week next week um they've got to make a parker jacket i think when that's uh, that's going to have quite a bit of detail in the zip um and then i think they said the made to measure was bringing bowie to the catwalk so that's going to be colorful i think and interesting so look forward to seeing you then bye